In this tutorial, we are going to cover frame rate, frame count, and millis. Each of these elements allow us to manipulate time in a different way in P5.js. You can think about the modern browser as a kind of media player. It also operates on a frame per second basis. In fact, the browser that we're using day in and day out operates on a 60 frame per second basis. So I'm going to actually create a quick animation and we can try to manipulate the frame rate. So in this animation, we're going to create a rectangle and it's going to spin around in the center of the canvas. I'm going to initiate a starting value for the rotation as a zero. And I'm actually going to change the rec mode and it's going to be center. And I'm going to translate uh, the anchor point to the center of the canvas. And I'm going to rotate using R. And here I'm going to say R equals R plus quarter pi so that for every frame that passes, um, it's going to rotate the shape by 45 degrees. And rec is going to be 0, 0, 40, 200. Okay, so when I hit play, we're going to get this kind of like frantically spinning rectangle. Um, at every single frame that passes, it's spinning 45 degrees clockwise. And um, what we can do next is adding a frame rate function. And I'm just going to start from one frame per second. So, so essentially, you can see that by slowing the frame rate down, it, it completely alters our P5.js environment. Um, I can say 10 frames per second and it's going to move in a different way. Um, it's always going to be choppy because essentially you're slowing the frame down, right? You're, you're taking frames away. And, and so um, if you are trying to slow your animation down instead of, slow, instead of decreasing the frame rate, um, another way to do that, I'm just going to demonstrate it quickly, is returning the frame rate to, six, to 60. Another way to do that is you can go to your r equals r plus quarter pi or whatever number it is that you have. And I can say uh, times 0 0.05, for instance. And it's going to essentially divide up that quarter pi into smaller chunks and, and move a little bit at a time in a smoother way. So um, the next thing that I want to talk about is frame count. So frame count, what it does is it calculates the, the number of frames that have passed since the start of the sketch. So here I'm going to actually create a local variable called fc and it's going to um, take in the, the, the update of the frame count. And I'm going to also print out FC. So if I click play, <laughs> um, we're going to see like the number of frames that have passed inside our console. And essentially, um, frame count can be useful sometimes because, because we can also borrow this sort of like endlessly running frames um, to, to manipulate different kinds of visuals inside of the program. So, so for instance, I can comment my, my line 17 out and replace R with frame count. And, and what's, going to, what's going to happen is it's going to take the frame count and, and just plug that into the rotation. Right, it's, it's kind of glitching out a little bit because we are actually not operating in the degree mode. So I can add that here, angle mode degrees. 
So that's going to make a lot more sense to the computer. Um, now it's thinking in numbers terms and it understands what, you know, 315 degree means. And it can also understand, you know, the degrees above that. So, so this is one way of utilizing frame count, and utilizing that constantly running incre in increasing number to do something. Um, however, frame count actually um, only reflects on the number of frames that has been run since the start of the program. Um, but if you if you look at you know certain certain tools that you can find such as stat.js and and use it to analyze the speed of your browser a browser actually don't exactly run at 60 frames per second consistently right almost just like how a analog projector or an old one doesn't run 60 frames per second consistently and, and so sometimes it would run 60, sometimes it would be a little below. So um, essentially using the frame count to, to calculate um, things that's happening in the program has its pros and cons because it's not always consistent. Another um, function that we can use is something called millis. So here I'm going to write let m equals millis and next to fc I'm just going to add a second variable for us to compare them and what millis is it's it's that it's representing the the millisecond that has passed since the start of the sketch so you can actually use millis to do many different kinds of things um, so, for instance, you can use Millis to uh, integrate Millis into a conditional statement and create different sequencing of animation. So, for example, maybe I can create an animation sequence where um, from the beginning of the sketch up to five seconds, I could have the rectangle spin clockwise, and after five seconds, it will spin counterclockwise. So, um, in order to do that, I am actually going to replace my frame count with an R. And I'm going to say if M is smaller than 5000, then R equals R plus 1. And else if m is bigger and equal to 5,000, r equals r minus 1. So if I hit play, moment of truth, um, we'll see that the second keep progressing. It's almost 5 seconds, and it rotates back. Um, when you are programming this yourself, you might find out that loading um, millis into your console log is helpful to a certain degree, but it actually slows the sketches down. So if I remove my console.log here and, and play again, my sketch is going to be a lot smoother.